Hello there everyone, this is Karen and Sherson Lee, and this is my very first Patreon video, woohoo! Um, so for this video, people wanted me to explain how I go about setting a scene. Uh, so this is how I go about setting a scene. Um, I chose this sort of weird city scene, kind of just to challenge myself to draw a lot of characters. It's a little hectic, but I think, uh, you'll be able to tell my process by me going through it. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing that I'm going to do is make a document, and then do a whole bunch of thumbnails. What I want to do with these thumbnails is figure out what the heck I'm drawing. I knew I wanted to do a city scene with a lot of characters, because, I don't know, challenge and junk, and I'm bad at buildings, I'm bad at a whole lot of characters, so why not do all those things that I'm bad at? I don't know. Um, so in doing these thumbnails, I just want to figure out the main focal point of my piece and what my piece is about, since usually I'm drawing to a story. Uh, so here I was trying to figure out the story of my drawing, and thus the focal point, and what things would be. Um, yeah, this is like hyper speed, but I usually do these as quickly as I can, just to get the idea. And then I decide which one I like. This one is the one I like. Um, so once I figure out that, what I start doing is laying down the f three things, the foreground, the midground, and the background. Um, right now I'm laying in the foreground, which is going to be like the least important thing, and basically like a framing device towards whatever action I want to be happening. Uh, for this scene, the uh, main action will be these kids chasing each other um, through this town. So I want everything to kind of lead into that. Uh, yep, here I am. Drawing those characters, doing the sketch, just something quick. Um, again, like for all of this, I'm trying to be pretty quick. I'm a little bit faster or slower at this point just because I want to make sure everything is easy to clean up. But um, as you can see in the mid ground where I want the attention to be, I'm still making sure everything leans towards the focal point of the piece, which is that fox character. Um, and that all the characters are reacting, either reacting to it or leading into it, including the buildings. Um, as you can see, all the buildings are kind of leaning into the area where I want the um, person looking at this drawing to look. So everything's as clear as a pie. That's not really what I meant, but that's all right. So after I do that, I start laying in values, using the same sort of idea where I want everything to be leading to this main character. And I block in the foreground, which is just a bunch of junk. And I also decided I needed something to the right side of the screen to um, keep things from getting too ultra hectic. So after I decided on all that good value stuff, uh, I'm just lining the things. So. Um, yeah, until I'm done lining, I think I'm just gonna put on some real nice music for you guys to listen to. Woohoo! Red you 
railroad man And my dress for my driver and the man Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed Charlie Poole. I like Charlie Poole. He's a pretty good, pretty good guy. As you can see, I am still lying. It took me a long time to line this. I'm not so used to doing digital lines. And I think I was using a new brush that I made just before this video. Um, but I'm almost done lining, I promise. Uh, at this point in the video, I, or in the drawing, I don't know, whatever, I started to realize that things were a little bit messy, and also I forgot to record, so I started coloring. So the missing point there, uh, since I accidentally stopped recording, was I got rid of the bug because it was taking away from the story of the piece. It was just getting a little hectic, and I couldn't. Uh, you couldn't really understand what was happening in the drawing. So what I ended up doing is getting rid of the bug and moving over to Fox Kid, and I think I moved the other kids a little bit too. Um, just to bring the attention back to where I wanted it to be in the scene. Um, so then, according to the values that I had created earlier, I started laying in color, which I also did not record. I am so sorry. I will be better about this for the next video. Um, but I'm laying in color, just keeping in mind what values I want to, values and saturation that I want to um, bring the I the I, I the viewer a viewer I was gonna say audience this is the the viewer the viewer or the audience whatever uh, how to bring it right to that fox kid and um, so by what I was mostly doing is playing with both warm and cool colors um, and I think the fox should be the warmest color on the thing just to bring your eye right to it and then around the edges I brought down the saturation and made the colors a lot cooler and I always keep a layer to check my values as you can see there uh, just to make sure that everything's looking on point and that the uh, area of highest contrast is where the eye is gonna go and where my character needs to go so always keep a saturation layer if you're working digitally just to make sure your values are working well. And if you're working traditionally, you can use your cool little smartphone and use your uh, black and white filter to make sure that your saturation is working. Um, yep, so yeah. And uh, next month I will do a digital painting tutorial. You can kind of see me doing it here, but I was doing weird stuff that I haven't done before. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure exactly what I was trying here. I was trying to, instead of how I usually digitally paint, um, which is more with a traditional approach, I was trying to be like all digital and junk. Also, I realized doing this video for the very first time that you can like, you can make a layer over another layer and then link it so that you don't, it just stays linked to the layer under it and you don't accidentally color another thing. That's pretty cool. I didn't know you could do that, but I know now. So hey, uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool thing to do. I forgot what they're called, but if you right click and then you do link layer, it's a pretty, pretty good thing. I think everyone knows that but me, but there you go. Now, now you know. Um, yeah. 
So I'm just adding an atmosphere, double checking values, making sure again that the fox and the chase are the most important part of the scene. They're the most saturated, they're the most dynamic, contrast is working, and I'm painting in details in the meantime. So uh, lacking much else to talk about, I will play some more music. I don't know what I'll play this time. I guess I will just figure it out. So our super fun guest this month was Charlie Poole. We like Charlie Poole. Woohoo! That was also Charlie Poole. Um, so I finished coloring, as you can see, and painting things. So what I am doing is just the very final steps where I want to make sure all the atmosphere and values and everything are working. I also thought maybe I should try seeing if changing the color to a cool color, since everything else is pretty warm, would work and I decided that was a bad idea, so I just made it orange again. Whatever. Anyway, here's the final piece. Um, yeah, I think the most important things to keep in mind in terms of setting a scene is what is your scene about? Making sure everything focuses on that scene. Controlling your bigs and smalls and medium variables and your values and making sure everything supports the story of your drawing. Just, you know, setting a scene. Like you would set a animated scene, or a theater scene, or anything else. The focus is on the story of your drawing, and you should make sure that's what's happening. Um, yeah. 
well, I hope this was helpful at least a little bit. And next month I will be a little bit more in depth in my uh, methods for digital painting, which vary, but I will try and paint a simple portrait drawing or something and talk about what I'm doing as I do that and see if that's helpful for everyone. Maybe, maybe I'll make some brushes for you guys, show you how to make a brush. I'll do that too. Um, so yeah, that concludes this month's Patreon video. Woohoo! Uh, special thanks to our impromptu guest, Charlie Poole, who does great music. Thanks, Charlie Poole. You're dead, but I love you. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Have a super good day. Goodbye.